So I started getting emails and shit from people sharing stories that all basically had the same headline, something along the lines of nuns are now the largest religious group in America. And I'm thinking to myself, that's been true since like 2019. If you divide Christians up between Catholics and Protestants, which is something that demographers pretty much always do, the plurality of Americans list their religion as none or nothing in particular. We crossed that line years ago. And as the resident demographics nerd, I led the show in celebration when we did. So why was that headline circulating so much now? Well, I dig into it a bit. Turns out it's coming from this new survey that Pew just released about nuns, and it's filled with good shit. Right. So the, the reason that nuns are the largest religious group is because it's the catch all that's left over when you subtract out all the organized religions. Saying that America's largest religious group is nuns is a little like saying that America's favorite movie is other. Right. There's just weren't enough choices on the list to really capture a meaningful snapshot of people's religious beliefs. So this latest survey, the one that prompted the headlines, is an effort to dig into that group a little more and answer the question of what we're talking about when we say nuns. Of course, the caveat that has to accompany every mention of the nuns is the reminder that nun doesn't mean atheist. The majority of people in that nun bucket actually do believe in a god of some sort. Atheists do count as nuns, and we're a substantial portion. 17% of nuns identify as atheist, another 20% as agnostic. And so, not surprisingly, when you lump us all together, you can wind up with some pretty misleading statistics. For example, nuns tend to be less civically engaged and vote less than religious people, and they're pretty evenly split between men and women. But if you tease out just atheists from that group, they tend to be more civically and politically engaged than religious people, and they lean hard on the male side of the gender spectrum. Now, when you see these statistics, it's easy to think of the non-atheist nuns as the low-hanging fruit for us if we want to expand, right? These spiritual but not religious believers in a God too vague to define and too fragile to intervene aren't protected by the hard chrysalis of organized religion and formal apologetics. So, you know, they should, they should make for easy targets for anyone hoping to grow the ranks of atheism. But in a lot of ways, the lack of substance is precisely what protects their beliefs. Any proof against God needn't be proof against their God. Their conception of God can retreat forever and you're left punching smoke. I mean, if I'm going to argue, give me a Catholic or, or one of those hardcore Bible is the irrefutable word of God Pentecostal types or something like that, right? Their beliefs are as solid as a concrete block. And yes, that's a far less pleasant thing to punch than smoke. But if you're punching concrete, something is going to break. Right. There will at least be an end to all of this. And as unlikely as it is, if I can punch through just one of those concrete blocks, the whole wall might come tumbling down. I know an awful lot of atheists that got there by way of losing one single argument. But none of those atheists were rejecting the Gumby God of the nuns. If I prove their God doesn't fit into this hole, they could always just move him into some other hole. They have no doctrine to discredit, no holy book to repudiate, no imperatives to impugn. What's more, their lack of allegiance is also a lack of accountability. The members of a church can be persuaded by all the evil shit it turns out their church does. But the God of the nuns can't be blamed for the kids that the Catholic Church raped or the gay people the Baptist Church tortured or the apostates that the Mormon Church shunned. Right? They're free and clear. But now none of this is to say that the nun atheist nuns are unreachable or even that they're hard to reach. It's just that you can't get there by arguing. I know because I was one of them. If Pew had asked 30-year-old Noah what religion he was and gave him the same options that there are in this survey, he'd have given the answer as nothing in particular. He might even have used the term spiritual but not religious. And what I needed to get me over that hump all the way to admitting to reality of things, it wasn't an argument. It was permission. For me, that came in the form of a sign on the side of a bus in Manhattan that said, you don't have to believe in God to be a moral or ethical person. I remember just staring at that and wondering why I needed somebody else to tell me that. I felt like until then, if I rejected religion outright, I was being left out. There would be no place for me. There would be no category for me. But seeing that sign, hearing a friend of mine say, but come on, man, you know there's no God. Those were the things that made the difference for me. 
once I knew the door was there, I didn't need to be convinced to walk through it. Look, there's a lot of good shit in this new post report, and I'll have it linked in the show notes if you want to look at the summary. It mostly tells us what we already know. Atheists skew male, young, educated, and white. But it also shows us that the pool of leftover nuns has all the diversity that we lack. Skew slightly female. It's got a lot more variation in skin color, and it includes people all along the education and income spectrum. And for many of them, like myself, all it's going to take to get them across the threshold is a welcome mat. 